we all know the problem of having hundreds, thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of digital photos on our phones, laptop, or any other hard drive that is laying around. And the worst thing is that the more photos we have, the worse our overview gets. So we are lost in years of photos that don't really have a structure and we cannot find what we are looking for. So in this video, I will show you how to finally organize your photos and put an end to the ever growing mess of pictures on your devices. The best thing about the five step process I'm going to show you is that it's super simple and does not require any third party software if you would want to keep it super lean. The first thing you need to do is to gather all of your photos in one place. No matter how many photos you have and how scattered they are, to get a complete overview and do it right for once, they all need to be gathered. Ideally, the place to gather all your photos is on your laptop or your computer because there are just a lot more options to just purely navigate on your phone. This doesn't mean that the photos need to stay on your laptop, but for the organization exercise, it's best. So maybe you already have one or several folders on your computer where you have dumped your photos. In addition, make sure to also move any additional photos from other external hard drive or cloud storage to or next to that folder. Finally, move the pictures from your phone to another folder next to the others from your laptop, hard drive or cloud. Now you should have all of your pictures at or around one place, which could look like this. That could be a dedicated photos folder in your overall files and folder structure, or when using Windows, you could also use the dedicated and pre-built pictures library. Having all pictures that you want to organize and sort in one place, you should remove the photos that you don't want or need. That could be duplicates that are just eating up storage space or pictures that you don't want because they are blurred, just screenshots or WhatsApp images or anything like that. Usually such pictures can be found on your photos camera roll instead of coming from a proper camera. To get rid of those unwanted pictures like the blurred ones or no longer needed screenshots, unfortunately there is no other solution than going through all of your pictures and deleting them one by one. Coming from your phone, sometimes your pictures are more explicitly labeled than coming from a camera. So in case you're just looking for WhatsApp images, you might have the chance, depending on how your phone labels those pictures, to search for certain file names such as WhatsApp and it will just return the WhatsApp images. In case you expect a lot of unnecessary files there, you can make use of the search functionality and faster clean up your photos. To get rid of duplicate photos, there are two options. First, the one without any other third-party solution, as I promised in the beginning. Or second, there's an alternative way that requires third-party software. The former does not require you to download anything and get familiar with another tool, but it also takes a lot more more time and manual effort compared to the latter option. Also using a tool guarantees that you are removing all duplicates whilst doing everything manually might still leave you with duplicate files eventually just because you might not be as accurate as a tool. Using no tool just means going through your pictures, the different folders and events and checking if you can find any duplicates that should be deleted. I mean, yes, that's very tedious with several thousands photos, almost impossible. So eventually you would want to use a tool anyways. Personally, I've been using the free version of CCleaner to tidy up my computer, and it also happens to have a functionality to identify and remove duplicate files. But I know there are so many other tools for photo and file management and duplicate removal out there. So feel free to do your own research and use the tool that suits you best. To use CCleaner for removing duplicate photos, open the app, go to Tools and Duplicate Finder. There you can set some filters like file name, size, or decide to not looking at specific files like hidden or system files. Finally, you can choose which drives or folders you're looking to find duplicates. Click search and after some seconds, a list of duplicate files will be shown. On top, most likely a lot of system or other files will be shown that you can ignore and just scroll down once you start to recognize pictures, most likely starting their file names with IMG for image or DSC for disk or similar. On the left side, you can check all of the duplicates that you would like to delete and click on delete selected once you're done. 
Do you like the insights from today's video so far? Then you might also be ready to master your digital organization. Discover the Digital Architect, a comprehensive guide I've personally written, packing all my knowledge and experience into your ultimate toolkit for digital efficiency. This isn't about just organizing files. It's a complete overhaul of how you manage your digital life. From streamlined file management to best practices for handling your emails, calendar, and your notes, this guide provides actionable tips that can transform your approach to digital organization. So if digital clutter has been holding you back, this guide is your solution. Dive into the digital architect and start reclaiming your time, energy, and headspace today. Click the link in the description below to learn more and boost your productivity. Now that you have gotten rid of all redundant photos, it's time to organize. Before actually moving files around, you need to think of and create a proper photo structure that you would want to use going forward. Regardless of the final structure, the main goal should always be to find the photo you're looking for in the least amount of time. This can be achieved by many different structures, but it's eventually up to you to decide which one works best for you, your photos and your way of thinking, organizing, and searching. Here are three quite popular structures that might give you a bit of inspiration to tailor your own. First, the hierarchy structure by date is probably the most common and also straightforward one to organize photos. It simply means organizing your photos by date, starting with the highest level of the hierarchy being year or maybe even decade if you would like to. So you would have one main folder per year, which has 12 subfolders, one for each month. Alternatively, you could also say, I just want to organize by quarter. So you would only have four subfolders per year. I recommend using the month number as a prefix in the folder name, such that they are sorted properly and not in alphabetical order. But make sure to write 01 for January, 02 for February, and so on. Because if you just use one and two, they will be sorted next to 11 and 12. So November and December, which we obviously don't want. Within each month or quarterly folder, you would then have sub subfolders per event. For example, in December, you would have a subfolder for Christmas or New Year's Eve. In case you have a bunch of photos that do not belong to a specific event, but are just taken randomly across the month or year, I would recommend storing them in a folder per month that is labeled miscellaneous or something like that. If you don't like this system, you could also organize your photos by topic. That means that the main level of organization is not years, but rather topics like travel, family events, your hobbies, nature, pictures, or anything else. Below each main folder, you would then have subfolders by event. For example, in the travel folder, you could have one for each vacation or weekend trip that you have been doing. Or if your hobby is tennis, you could have subfolders for different tennis tournaments or training sessions. And the third option could be a combination of the hierarchy date structure and the topical structure. Here you would have years on the very top level and below different topics for each year, ideally always the same. For example, per year you would have a subfolder for travel, family events, or your hobby. And within those, you would have sub subfolders for each event that belongs to the respective topic and year. As you can see, there is no one fits all solution and it really depends on your personal preferences and the way you would like to organize your photos. In case you've labeled your photos properly and are working with your photos metadata and the possibility of tagging them, just mass dumping all of your photos in one single folder might also be a solution. But you might want to decide that after we have covered both proper labeling and tagging in just a bit. In any case, having decided on one folder structure, it's time to create it and finally sort your files into that structure. I know that might take some time, but it's super satisfying once everything has its own dedicated place. Now you might end up with a folder that, for example, includes all of your photos of Christmas Eve 2022. But the photos are still named the way they were named by the camera or your phone, which might be random numbers like IMG underscore one, two, three, 
or something like that. If you don't mind, you can leave them as they are, but ideally you rename them to match the date and event and it does not take you more than a few seconds per folder. Assuming you have decided to go for the hierarchy structure by date, a good way to name your files is by always repeating the year, month and date followed by the event and the photo ID. By doing that, you will always know to which date this photo can be associated, even if you are sharing just individual photos without having the context of your entire photo structure. Using Windows, you can easily rename all photos within a folder at once. Just highlight all of them by pressing Ctrl and A, then press F2, which lets you rename the first one, type in the new file name without any photo ID in the end, and press Enter. Windows File Explorer will automatically apply the new name to all the highlighted photos and add a continuous number at the end of the file name. If you want to go the extra mile and still have some time and nerves left after this journey so far, you can add or review metadata and text of your photos. This will help to improve, for example, the search functionalities. Metadata for pictures can be date and time, location, and a lot of camera settings, but you might also want to tag specific people, places, or events to photos. That gives you, for example, the chance to search for a festival or your favorite bar or restaurant to see all of the photos that were taken at those places. But a word of caution if you're using Windows, because using metadata or text with Windows File Explorer is not a very fun, easy or practical thing to do compared to Apple. Using text is definitely optional, but what is not is doing regular backups. I recommend using a separate hard drive or cloud storage or both to backup not only only your photos, but also your files in general. Having at least one backup location, you can make sure to be on the safe side in case your main drive is broken or corrupted at some point. Instead of doing all the organization manually, there's also photo management software out there, such as Digicam, Adobe Bridge, and many more. They can help to automatically file your photos after you have imported them, change metadata, remove duplicates, or rename files in batch. So as I mentioned earlier, you should file your photos in your overall files and folder structure on your device. But having a proper structure is also not a very easy and trivial task. So check out this deep dive where I'll show you how you can achieve such a powerful structure and make any file easy accessible going forward.